Hello, everyone. Welcome to Nanalyze at Dawn. I'm your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. We have 0k exhibition matches. And for those of you who have been watching me because of the Arena of Valor tournaments I've been doing recently, this is the game I normally do. It's a real-time strategy game based loosely off of slash modded from Total Annihilation, the robot strategy game from like 22 years ago that also became the inspiration for Supreme Commander. So if this looks like Total Annihilation, Supreme Commander, Planetary Annihilation, any of those games... It's it does have a shared heritage. Anyway, starting out, Izzeride going for the tank factory, starting, and Anarchid going for rovers. Anarchid looks like they're playing it a bit more aggressive, coming with a couple darts, just to double check what's going on. And on this map too, I should point out there are a lot of reclaimable rocks, a lot of reclaim reclaimable rocks. And one of the things that you might see Anarchid do, if not by accident, is run scorchers through them. Heavy enough units can go through the rocks and destroy them, dying your opponent reclaim. It doesn't happen all the time, but I wouldn't be surprised at this level if we do see a little bit of it. At this point, though, Anarchid looks much more concerned about what Izzeride is doing, the fact that Izzeride is getting kind of close without one Kodachi. Two darts and a Scorcher should be able to take out a Kodachi, and indeed they will have no problem doing so thanks to the dart slow effect. There it goes, Kodachi goes down, and now Anarchid in a nice position to go for a counter raid. No other major defenses are up for Izzeride. They do have the Welder, which does have the gun, but that's about it. And, of course, the Kodachi, the first one, already went down to this group of units. While the second one does only have to deal with slightly softened up darts, it still has to deal with the darts. And if they get slowed, that Kodachi is not going to escape. And now Izzeride getting a little bit out of position, moving that Kodachi a little bit away from where they're seeing the radar dots come in. And that is going to be huge. At this point, Anarchid basically set up perfectly for this. So Anarchid is... Anarchid's up and running. Izzeride's able to at least block off a few of the darts. Scorcher, unfortunately, did come in a little bit late. That dart Scorcher move speed difference is real and does make a bit of a make it a bit of a problem if you're not holding the control key when you push them. Still, though, Anarchid mainly focused on making the contain. I mean, getting rid of this welder would have been nice, but so long as Anarchid can provide pressure and make sure Anarchid... Sorry, make sure Izzeride can't punish any of the expansions Anarchid does, Anarchid can actually expand pretty quickly. They have a Mason going over to the southwest, they have a Mason over to the natural expansion, and they're basically just pulling Izrael on a chase, and that'll really help out. Like, as you see, there's a bit of defenses coming in here, but a single Lotus is not going to be enough to stop the Kodachi from doing some damage. However, threatening the back line, that is something Izrael cannot ignore, or at least isn't ignoring, and that's exactly what Anarchid wants. A couple more darts are coming in along with the Scorcher. That should be enough to actually start dealing with these Kodachis fairly efficiently. Of course, the darts do have to get in to get those low beam hits. But the Kodachi has fired off. There's just nothing that's going to save it. The Scorcher does survive. Wins a 1v1 pretty handily. And now the Commander is heavily threatened. Should be able to get its machine gun or whatever it's using for counter storm up in time. And there it is. The machine gun indeed. And that does stop the Scorchers from coming in here. Taking them out completely. Should point out too that this is... Oh wait, no. This is still the old patch. There's a change not yet released that is going to boost Commander HP. I was about to point that out, but I realized, no, that's not that's not a thing yet. Next patch. Anyhow, Kodachi coming in around the back and demonstrating kind of what I mean. The Kodachi can kind of just hit and run. Like, it gets in, takes a bunch of damage, sure, but, you know, gets rid of a Metal Extractor, or gets rid of Lotus, gets rid of the possibility of Metal Extractors being built, slows things down for Anarchid. And I should point out that as a result, Izzeride, they haven't really been harassed. They've taken two expansions solidly. Anarchid has one iffy, another one that they're over they're defending quite a lot. So there's only a lot that they can do with that, and that'll mean Anarchid's gotta be fighting a little bit from the back foot here. Not to mention Izzeride is starting to go for some of this reclaim. Though then so is Anarchid. Again, this map being as reclaim heavy as it is, it's really gonna come down to how well that's able to work out. And Izzeride actually not using as much as I thought they would, just mainly working off of what attacked them. However, they also have a little to worry about here in their main base. Stardust is up. Nice little riot turret there, so no issues in. And Blitz as well coming in. There's the follow-up Scorcher on top of the Darts. The Blitz should go down. We'll only be able to hit one at a time, and indeed does go down. Nicely done with the Darts. That is why you use the Darts alongside the Scorchers, as Anarchid is demonstrating very aptly. The only downside, of course, Darts are quite weak. Now, they are very frail units, but you make them do their job, and they will be able to completely rip your opponents to shreds. And actually, with this assault, we're seeing Anarchid expanding once again, and now getting the economic advantage for sure, on top of getting the pack lines. So, Anarchid absolutely dominating this entire game, while at the same time, Izzeride is just 
falling further and further behind. Losing a welder is a huge blow, especially when they're already behind on expansions. And they don't have any, much reclaim going on either. I'm a little bit surprised we are seeing so many Kodachis, though. At this point, I would have expected Izurai to have swapped over to Ogres or possibly Mass Blitz. But no, pure Kodachi, which we're seeing, does have a bit of a hard time. Scorchers can outrun them. Scorchers, as a result, can use Retreat Micro against them very effectively. And while Scorchers do get deal more damage close up, if they're not getting hit, they're not getting hit. And at the same time, Anarchid, all they're really doing is providing Light Contain. What they really want is to get their, to get their production up, get their more metal up, get everything going for their industry. And that'll work fine. I mean, they got all the rocks, too, that they're just taking. Entire field of reclaim that is completely up for grabs. Izzeride is not trying to stop them at all. So, on the other hand, Izzeride still does have their production up. Anarchid only has the one caretaker and actually is not in the factory. Anarchid primarily focusing all their economy on building up their infrastructure for further economy, which does mean Izzeride has a bit of an opening. Because Izzeride's focused much more on unit production, there is a timing window right now where if Izzeride is able to build up a bit of an army over the course of the next minute, like, really, really focus on that army construction. They are going, and especially to get the reclaim as well, which I don't think they're trying to do. But if they did, and focused heavily on the army, they would actually be able to outpace what Anarchid has for the time being. Like, Anarchid just now getting the air plant, but they don't have any caretakers in their main base. They don't have any fact. They don't have anything assisting the factory. Everything is basically open, and that is huge. Israel trying to take advantage of that. Not sure they're, how much they're aware of it, but still, they are sort of taking advantage of it. Kodachi going in the back lines. No resistance here either. The Mason has not built anything up. Anakin might be aware of it. Same time over the front lines. Blitz versus Spencer, but mainly a distraction for the real Blitz coming in the back lines to take out the commander, or at least inconvenience it somewhat. Unfortunately, these Spencers are a little bit too numerous, and Izzeride's forces were not quite as well coordinated as they needed to be to take them out. At this point, Izzeride does not have radar that far in either, whereas Anarchid... Actually, neither, neither do they, to be honest. They do have... Enough radar to see what was going on in the middle of the map, though. I'm actually also a little surprised we aren't seeing any of the Sparrows. I'm not sure why the players aren't going for that, because right now that would have helped Izzeride a lot to know exactly what's going on, to know that basically everything is open. And Anarchid is essentially just ready to, ready to start pumping out a huge amount of units in about a minute and a half. Although even then, right now, we are starting to see 30 metal into the fat, into the rover assembly, 10 into the, well, 15 into the airplane plant. This is starting to turn around. The timing window is closing, and Izzeride primarily focused on getting up their defenses to make sure the air units cannot get in. Not the worst idea, but considering that that was the only window Izzeride had to really get their armies going, I think Izzeride might have lost the biggest chance they had. Having said, Izzeride going for it. There's the blitzes coming in here. Hitting the line of the fencers off the side. That opens things up a little bit. Most defenses are distracted. The Blitz is able to get a free fencer. Another one goes down, or will soon go down. The Blitzes, however, are now the focus of all defensers, and only two of them can be stunned at a time. Those fencers able to take out the Blitzes without too much trouble. That was still, you no, know, 1,200 metal worth of fencers against 600 metal worth of Blitzes, or 900 metal worth of Blitzes. So not the worst value, but considering the amount of damage the base has taken in the meantime, that is still totally worth it. Is right, however, going for yet another assault, and this should be much more successful. First Spencer is completely out of the out of position. Should be taken out. No problem. There it goes. Four for you. The next two are going to go down as well. No problem. The last four. Finally some contest. Finally some struggle. But it's not going to be enough. Three blitzes mean that almost all of them can be stunned at once. And that will be it. The fencers go down. That is still, though, fencers at the cost of allowing Anarchy to get the Thunderbird. Allowing Anarchy to get more darts. Allowing Anarchy to get Dominatrices, which are an amazing unit to use against tanks because of the ability to capture... And getting a full-fledged air force that it can start being used to take out commanders, take out metal extractors, just take out whatever targets of interest there might be on this map. And of course, Anarchid, they have the entire bottom half. Izzeride only has a few metal extractors on their half of the map. Starting now to expand to get a few more, but it's really late into the game to do that, considering their opponent has had double the economy for most of the game, and really has only fallen back in production which, that's no longer the case either. Five caretakers in the factory in the airplane plant not even building anything, making Izzeride's investment in anti-air feel a little bit premature. To be fair, though, Izzeride won't be at risk. I mean, the Ravens won't be able to take out most of the metal extractors. The commander's going to be fine. But I'm not sure how worth it that is. Izzeride just now finally getting some of the back lines built up, but there's a Scorcher already in the back. That is going to be a major issue. Same time... 
Possible distraction coming in here, but it's not giving enough. The blitzes are pretty much a last stand here. This is about it for his Red's army. Thunderbird comes in here. Stuns out all the damage agencies. One blitz is alive. That is going to be possibly enough, but unfortunately for it, there is more zombies coming in here, and that's it. The only blitzes that were allowed to leave that Thunderbird range were the ones that currently belong to Anarchid, that were stolen from Izzeride. Now Anarchid with this giant dominatrist army. They still have to deal with the Stardust. They don't really have the units to do that. The defensors are not here, but the Ravens are. The Ravens will be able to get rid of that Stardust, open up that expansion. I mean, really... Should be able to get rid of the Stardust, wipe out some of the Metal Extractors as well, but no. Making sure that Stardust is down. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if the Dominators just literally steal this entire expansion. Not even kill it. Just take the Metal Extractors, take the Lotuses, take everything. Turn it to their own side. And again, also making sure that nothing can attack back. Only the Dominators can do anything. Indeed, they are taking this expansion right out from under Izzeride's nose. That is not a thing you see happen very often, but it can happen. Dominators can capture anything. They can capture buildings, they can capture commanders. You can indeed turn your opponent's entire force against them. Although, to be fair, should Israel find a way of taking on these dominatrices, difficult though that is, this entire base will revert to them. That may not matter though. I mean, the thing with the economy in this game is that, and pretty much any RTS game, is that a lot of it is very snowball-y. If you have the economy, if you have that power, you are going to be able to just build up whatever you need. And Anarchy is doing exactly that, pumping out units all over the place, making sure that they do have a backup army just in case this front line does get broken. And really the only threat right now is this Cyclops, which I'm not sure how much damage it'll do, especially as the Thunderbird is coming in here, is seeking to stun that out, and disarm not quite happening yet. Capture is being attempted, and the capture is going to be much more successful. Blitz on top of that to get that EMP into the capture, and that is a captured Cyclops. Izzeride realizes that's it, there's nothing they can do, throws in the talon, Anarchid takes the game, Thanks to Dominatrices, because uh, of course it is. Also, I should point out that actually, speaking of next patch, as far as I can tell in the change notes, there is going to be a change that'll make Dominatrices a little bit weaker against the lighter units. I think what it is is that basically the capture damage is always going to have like a thousand health effectively tacked onto it. So, light things like solar colliders, metal extractors, light units, those will take longer to capture. But heavier things like Cyclops is not going to be as big of a difference proportionally. Which, I mean, it still may not help against the tank matchup too much. It'll help against Blitz to an extent, Kodachi quite a bit. But definitely against things like taking the economy away from your opponents. But yeah, heavy tank, heavier tank units could still be in trouble. Regardless, that was that game. So the next game that is up is going to be between... Let's see what we have here. Etsuri and Jasper on Trojan Hills. You can tell I picked these maps because Trojan Hills comes up a lot. I mean, I think it's a good map. But it might also just be personal preference. Anyway, that is going to be up next, so stay tuned for that. And yeah, be back in a couple of minutes.